अस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमो महावतनाय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाम्ने गोवृत्ति गुरवे गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय तदाल कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तलभक्ता नमो पुत्रे राधे <coughs> my humble devotions in the lord's feet of my spiritual being om nitya lila pravishta sishman bhakti pragyan ke sogar swami and also in the lord's feet of my shiksha guru nitya lila pravishta om vishnu pal sishman bhakti vedan swami <coughs> we are explaining bhakti and bhakti is explained in shrimad bhagavata shubhe goswami has explained now the three past times of krishna so you are chanting some heart doing worshiping other limbs of bhakti is you are doing but no taste is hari katha then gradually all will go so in high class of a association and vaishno or do we should all this there and in their guidance we should first hear and then explain in so many ways by singing by glorifying him by explaining hari katha but first you will have to hear and serve your guru there and then you can That is why, if you want to be happy in this world and after that, tasma, ekin manusha bhagwan shastvatang pati, sro tapya kriti tapya shchas dheya pujya shchas nitya. If you want to be happy in this world and you want to attain pure bhakti, then ekin manusha ananya bhavena. One one pointed attention. One pointed attention. Attention. Oh, you should do pranam to Shastvatam Pati, the bandhu of devotees, Krishna, or the bandhus of of Jadavas, bandhu of Gops, and who is the Krishna himself, the general man. So tapya. कीर्ति तब्यस्य धेय पूज्यस्य नित्यला ऑलवेज एंड ऑलवेज यू शुड हियर अबाउट हिज नेम रूप गुण लीला एंड कीर्ति तब्यस्य यू शुड डू कीर्तन ऑफ ऑल लाइक सॉन्ग वी आर डूइंग एंड धेय यू शुड मेडिटेट ऑन कृष्ण 
but not alone Krishna, with his whole family, especially with Radhika and Gopis. If you will do, very soon your attachment to this world will be cut. They will cut. Who will cut? <laughs> High class of Asia. Oh, Guru, Vaishnava, will cut with their what? Sharp knife. Sharp knife. What is that? Ten. Their words. Their words. Their teaching. You cannot. But they are very powerful. Are very shown, they will cut up all your. So, you should have taste in Harikatha. Whether no taste, go there. If sleep comes, or oh, sleep there, no harm. <laughs> After some time, sleepness will go. Then will come sleepness. So, tasteful and very sweet pastimes of Krishna and the associates of Krishna, they will tell that. Oh, very soon your all sleepness, idleness, everything will go. Srivatan Swakatha. That is said in here. Swakatha. Krishna. Purna Shamana Kirtana. Hirdanta Sto Yabhadran Vidhinit Suhit Sutta. If you are hearing the very strong and very sweet pastimes of Krishna. Then Krishna, what he will do? Like a bandhu, like a friend, William friend, he will come in your heart. How he will come? Oh, by the Harikatha. By the Harikatha. Karnarandrena. He will come in your heart. And he will Vidhunu. You will take away all your anats, aparat, unwanting thing. Very soon. <coughs> so very carefully we should hear. Maya may come, sleepness may come. But <coughs> you should try to get very carefully hear all these things. Then he will go come in the heart in his form of Harikatha from high class of qualified Vaishnava and Guru. And he will brown your heart and clear it. What to brown? All at worldly attachment. Anger, lust and all other. And Krishna Bhakti will come. Nasta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavata Uttam Sloke Bhakti Rhoti is nasty. And then, if your all offenses, unwanting things, anas are about to go away, something, no nama prad, something others. It has been told in Hajan Rasya all these things. <coughs> then Bhagavat Sevaya. There are two things. Bhagavat, Bhakta, Bhakta Bhagavat Grantha. And Grantha Bhagavat. Bhagavat Bhakta is more powerful than Srimad Bhagavat. The lock and key of Srimad Bhagavatam. You can reach Bhagavatam, but you cannot take the essence. No strength. But if, oh Bhagavat Sivaya, you sir, Bhagavat means Bhakta. There are so many Bhaktas. Kanishtha, Madhyam, Uttam. Then again, Kanisht, 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 Madhyam, Kanishta, Uttam. 
and then madhyam, kanishta, madhyam, 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 uttam. And then uttam, then uttam, kanishta, uttam, madhyam, uttam, uttam. And also if you explain more, oh, thousands of gradation are of bhakti. But it should be uttam bhava. Like Parat, Parishit Maharaj heard from whom? Narada Goswami himself, where he heard? Sanak Sanandan, Sanat Sanat Sanatana Goswami, where he heard? From himself? Rupa Goswami, not Uttam, Bhakti Uttam, Bhagavan himself, Krishna. So you see one? But in this world, this class of Vaishnava are very rare. Very rare. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, oh, he will be available after one call. But Madhya Matikari you can find. If you are fortunate. Even by <coughs> Madhya 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 Uttam, you can make them Guru, Shiksha Guru, Guru Bho. And they will tell Harikatha. And gradually they will, they will take off all the bad things. How? By Harikatha. And Harikatha who is Harikatha? Krishna himself. Then he will come Krishna and as a Bandhu. He will clear all the things in heart. Tada rajastamo bhavak kam lo bhadyasya je cheta etai anabhidham satsitam satya satvam prasita. And then all kinds of lust, anger, tama, raja, oh I am all in all, false ego, all will come, go away. And then you will be like, become like tinadapi suniche na. Tarurapi sahisruna amanina manati. How prem will come? Then Mahaprabhu is telling. What? Kirup laile na prem upajay tar laksham slokshunam rai. And what he told? Oh, be tolerant. More than three. Be humble more than a hum cross, blade of, blade of cross. Give honor to all according to their stage. And don't want any praise or This is the qualification. And if it comes from the core of heart, bottom of heart, then name will give very soon Krishna Prem. <laughs> Even Prasanna Manasho. Bhavat Bhakti Yogata Bhavat Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangasya Jayati. All kinds of lust, attachment, worldly. Everything will go and he will be very happy. Jayatma Samprasita. His soul will be always happy. Not covered with any sufferings or anything. And tattva vijnanam mukta sangasya jaya. And then by the mercy of mukta, liberated soul, bhakti, uttama bhakti, madhyama bhakti. Then bhagavat tattva vijnanam. He will know all kinds of tattva vijnanam. Jiva Tattva, Krishna Tattva, Maya Tattva, Radha Tattva, pre, uh, pre, Krishna Tattva, even Prema Tattva, everything he will know. Rasa Tattva, Rasa Tattva, Lila Tattva, Jinda Tattva, everything he will know. Vidyate Hridaya Granthi. Chintyante Sarvasamsaya, Chintyante Chasya Karmani Dhrishta Yevatma Nishra. 
and then he will take darshan of Krishna in his heart, and then what will become? As a result, vidyate hridayakanti. All attachment from the world go away. And all kinds of doubt will go away. We have so many doubts. Our Guruji, whether knows or not, I think something bad, mm. lust coming. But my Gurudev, perhaps not. Should I tell him or not? Like this. Krishna is supreme, Lord or not, who can say? And if doubt comes, then you are dry from by transcendental bhakti, you will die. Shyante Chasya Parmani, all his fruitive curves will go away. Ato Vai Kavyo Nityam Bhakti Paramaya Amda Vasudeve Bhagavati Kurvanta Atma Prasidana. And that is why oh, all the Kavyo Nitya Mukta, liberated soul, being very happy. They do Prem Bhakti, Parma Bhakti, Vasudevi, Krishna, Bhagavati, Kurvanta, Atma Prasidana. This is only way to be happy. That he asks. Jayatma, So we should try to follow all these things. First we can begin. How Narad achieved the Bhakti? I have told you, there is no, not one Nara. He has a big history. He comes in Kalpa, in different, different ways. And in his last birth, he, came, he became, he took birth from any maid servant. How will this be? Can you? Lord. Not Charitra? And Guru Tattva also in that. Oma Gyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuram Militam Jina Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha. Srila Gurudev has ordered me to speak on Narada Charitra, the history of Narada Muni in one as described in the Srimad Bhagavatam in this time. Narada had been committed offense in the previous life as a Gandharva to the Sankirtan party, so he took birth in the uh, a son of a maid servant, like didn't know his father was, so not a very high birth. But in that position, what was, offense he had done? Where? In uh, in the heavenly planets, he was Gandharva, and he was mocking the uh, Sankirtan party. They were chanting, and he uh, made some criticism. It was before that? Before that? Oh, I don't know the point. Oh. Shamrani? I just know that he was singing uh, materialistic songs of enjoyment. Uh, instead of he, she said that he was singing materialistic songs, yes. not doing enjoyment. kirtan. But why? <coughs> so many he, was he was attracted with, with as apsaras in heaven. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He is always liberated soul, only for our teachings. He comes in this world by any trick that Brahma has caused him. So, 
गुरुदेवास से अबाउट डिस्कस नारद चरित्र नारद ऋषि वॉज सन ऑफ ब्रह्मा जी वॉट काइंड ऑफ सन ही केम फ्रॉम हिस थ्रोट ब्रह्मा जी लिबरेटेड नारद ऋषि इज लिबरेटेड ही इज मोर सुपीरियर देन ऑफ मिलियंस ऑफ ब्रह्मा ही इज दलवेज द एसोसिएट्स ऑफ कृष्ण He is himself. Narad Rishi has so many forms. Sometimes in Dasaras, sometimes Sukhara, sometimes Madhuras. In Sukharas, he is Priyarar Masakha of Krishna, means Madhu Mangal. And in Nuchar Nilmani Grantha, Sri Rupa Goswami Pat has explained and his commentary of Rupa Nilmani, Sri Rupa Vishwanatha Kali Thakur and Jeev Goswami Pat has explained. In Madhuras, he is Naradiya Gopi. is doing austerity to get gopi bhav so narad is always liberated but brahma ji ask him to help him for creation and narad is denied no i not came in this world to create to help you in creation in material creation is this a cause or no it is uh, against uh, against our vedic literature or no No. Why not? Because we have all come to do bhajan, not for worldly things. And Brahma was telling him that you should marry and make praja like me, and he refused. When the Narayan refused, he told, "I am your father. You are neglecting me, denying my order. Okay, then you go to Gangarva planet." I told, "Okay." I agree. So you went Gandharva planet, became Gandharva. Gandharva means we can sing very nice. If a father is telling that you should not do bhajan, what should you do? Obey him or not? No. No. Gita no. Bill Prahla. Simad Bhagwat told Guru na sasat sajano na sasat. What to say about father? If Guru also told, don't go to listen any higher Hari katha. Then a oh, Guru. जी The younger brother of Ravan, he gave up any kind of relation with his king and elder brother Ravan, even Guru Vishwanji and Bali Maharaj ji. When Bhavan Dev came to take some donation, Sutra Charya told, "Oh, don't think he's only ordinary doer. He is Vishnu. Don't give any donation. He told everything is for Vishnu. He is Almighty, Omnipotent, Omniscient. If I give or not, if he wants." He can tell, so he must give. But Sukta Charya, oh, if my disciple always will go away, then how I can manage my life? Disciple is my asset, so I have to keep him in my control. So he make any obstacle. Then Bhagwan Dev told, oh, please take wow, do achaman. When you are going to do achaman, then water is not coming out from the Ganga Sagar. Means one type of lotta. There is one small tube. The water will come out. He became a fly and covered the hole. The water should not come. Bhagwan Dev told, "Or oh, maybe your servants are cleaning, not proper cleaning, not clean properly. Okay, bring one kusa glass and clear the hole. As soon as he did, then blood came and sutra jal ran away. Then he became blind in one eye. Why? If you give." Any obstacle, make any obstacle for Bhagavad Bhajan, then you have to be blind in this life or any other life. So have to be very careful. Don't make any obstacle the service of Hari Guru Vishnu. So Narada said, "Okay." He became Gandharva planet, became Gandharva, and associated with so many Gandharvas. So one day, Brahma Ji want to make one very big sacrifice. He invited all. I invited Narada Rishi also, who became Gandharva, to sing there. So Narada Rishi came 
not in form of Narad, in form of Gandharva, with so many Gandharvis. And they were singing what? Not Vaidik song, not from some Vedas. They are singing material song and doing even so many, so many bad posture that Brahmaji became very angry. Oh, you are not listening to me? You have so many Muni Rishis has come here and you are making so many nonsense thing? Okay. You will be go. You have to go to material world and have to be son of a med servant. Oh, thank you. Now, so, okay. Then he came down in this world to help us in Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Thank you. 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 One time during the Chaturmasya, the four months of the rainy season, when these sages who are traveling will sit down and stop and do bhajan very intensely for those four months, four saints came to his mother's uh, her house, cottage, and they took shelter there for those months of Chaturmasya. During that time, Narada, he was a very well-behaved boy. He didn't uh, misbehave, he didn't speak nonsense, he was self-controlled, and he would serve those sages very nicely and very attentively. And he would hear their harika talk, because during these four months they would be constantly glorifying and chanting and remembering the glories of the Lord. So he heard so much purifying harika talk. One time, as they were about to go, he asked them, if he could honor the remnants of their prasadam. So because he had pleased them by his service and his humble and submissive and well-behaved attitude, they gave him that blessing. And when he tasted this maha prasadam, maha maha prasadam, of these maha bhagavats, uh, then immediately his heart became purified and cleansed and he experienced uh, the higher emotions of devotional service. He wanted to leave with these uh, sages, but he still had his mother was there attached to him and depending on him. But they gave him blessing. Who were these sages? They were the four Kumaras. Sanat, Sanandan, Sanat Kumar, and Sanatan. And so he had association of Maha Bhagavat, Maha Uttama Bhagavats. And they gave him blessing. Very quickly after that time, he desired uh, to go. He couldn't leave. Uh, some snake came and bit his mother, and she passed away. So now the young lad was free, and he began to go and wander the earth, chanting and remembering and, and seeing all of the varieties of the creation and seeing how it is all Maya, the Lord's Maya. Finally, he found some beautiful place in the forest, and there he began to meditate. At the time, what was the blessing the four Kumaras gave him before they left? They gave him mantra. Hmm? So this Diksha mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate they gave him, he chanted it very, very earnestly and sincerely. This diksha, what is this diksha? Uh, it's composed of two words, dibya gyanam tato dadyata, some d, something is given, and samshayate uh, pap, something is taken away. So what is given is divine knowledge, dibya gyanam. This is defined by Srila Jiva Goswami as of two, two kinds of divine knowledge. Uh, the nature, the specific knowledge, Bhagavat Srup Gyan, of the form of Godhead that you have a relationship with, that particular Ishtadev that you are related to. And the second type of Divya Gyanam that one receives at Diksha is Bhagavat Sambandha Vishesha Gyan. The specific, Vishesha means spe special, specific. Uh, sambandha means a relationship. That specific and special knowledge, gyan, that relates to your particular relationship with that, that form of the Godhead that you are related to. So this is what is meant by the dipi gyanam, tato dadyat, that is given at the time of diksha. And sakshayati pap, 
Uh, there are so many types of pop or sin. Kut, huh, which is lying uh, unmanifest uh, at the time. Bij, seeds of sin. And then uh, Parabda, the uh, sin that we have uh, incurred the reactions of now and this body uh, being one of them. And then Aparabda, those sins which we have act formed, performed in the past and now the reaction is just waiting to be experienced. At the time of Diksha, and this is the qualification of real Guru, he can take all those kinds of sins away from your heart. And even, there's a mystery here, uh, the divine nature of the name of the mantra he's giving you will also destroy even Prabhupada Karma. How this will be understood in the higher stages of Bhakti. So Narada received mantra uh, from qualified gurus. He chanted, uh, following all their instructions, very sincerely free, free, sincerely, free from attachment to anything in this world. But he had some small attachment that was that he wanted to perform his bhajan in a very nice place. So he chose to go into the forest, where it was very peaceful and calm and beautiful. And there, he, uh, for a moment, he got darshan of his Ishtadev, chanting his mantra. But only for a moment. And it, when he lost the vision, the sporty, he was, uh, he felt like he'd lost the greatest thing. His trance broke. He was crying. He was, how could he get this divine vision back? How, why did it appear and why did it gone? And then he heard a voice, a divine voice told him that, O Narada, in this life you will not see me again. But I have given you this divine vision just to increase your greed to attain me. So uh, there's a very interesting point here about in, in Nam Tattva and Guru Tattva that if even the uh, those who chant Namabas, huh? Ashrada Namabas, those who chant the holy name of the Lord, but without any faith, huh? either by as a joke or in anger or to indicate something else, like in the case of Ajamil, if even they will ha uh, uh, achieve liberation and freedom from their sins, uh, what is, and at the same time, those who have praying will always see the Lord within their hearts and before them, then what is the position of those uh, sh who have Shraddha but, and are chanting Namabhas? They don't have that complete revelation or divine vision of the Lord at all times, and yet they're certainly more fortunate and uh, of a higher caliber than those who are just chanting out of accident or uh, out of uh, anger or making a joke. So what is that? So, so the Archaris have commented that those who chant uh, the name, Namabhas, but who have faith in the higher stage of their bhakti, they will be given this sporty or divine vision of their Ishtadev, the Lord of their heart. So this is the Narada who received all these blessings from his guru, and I ask that Gurudev, you please give us all these blessings Thank you. too. All right. About Dhruva and compare by this shlok and Abhilashita. What qualities and what some lacking was there in. Also, you can explain in what category Narad Bhakti was. So Guru Dev ordered me to Srila Guru Dev ordered me to tell something about the bhakti of Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj was when he was a young boy, he wanted to sit on the lap of his father. And his stepmother said, he has no right to sit on the lap of his father unless he's born from my womb. The two mothers didn't get along. So Dhruva Maharaj became very angry. And he wanted to attain something 
in sort of a mode of revenge. He wanted to attain a kingdom greater than that of his father and greater than that of his father's father, that is Lord Brahma. So he wanted to see, attain the Supreme Lord and get the benediction of this very great kingdom that he could be the Lord of. So he went to his mother, and his mother said that much more than the love of your own mother, the Supreme Lord loves you. First he went to his mother without the interest to go to the Lord. So she turned him towards the Lord and says his love is more than millions of mothers. So whatever you want, you should go and approach him. So with that desire to have a kingdom greater even than the kingdom of Lord Brahma, uh, Dhruva set out to find God. So if somebody is sincerely seeking, then the Lord sends his representative to help him. So the Lord Bhagavan sent Sri Narada Muni to be his spiritual master. And at first Narada was encouraging him or discouraging him and told him to go back home. But Narada was so determined, sorry, Dhruva was so determined that Narada gave him that same mantra. And Dhruva began chanting that mantra. And he began performing austerities, such great austerities that at first he reduced his eating. Now he's a prince, never walking without shoes. But now he's living in the forest and reduced his eating the first month only to fruits and roots. Then in the next, only to, um, finally after six months, he kept reducing and reducing. After six months, he was only eating air. In other words, only taking a breath, maybe once every 12 days. He became so powerful that the Lord manifested in his heart. And because the Lord is the most heavy, so Dhruva Maharaj also became heavy. And he became so heavy, he was doing austerities of standing only on one foot and only eating every 12 days one breath of air. So he became so heavy that his one foot pressed down the earth. And the fact that he wasn't breathing made the whole universe as though not breathing and the whole universe began suffocating. Our Srila Prabhupada compared this to a person who's in an airplane. Ordinary Joe, John Doe is in an airplane, and this airplane is going 2,000 miles an hour. So this ordinary person being on that plane is also going 2,000 miles an hour. So because he, he was more ordinary, but because the Lord was sitting in his heart, who was the most heavy, so Dhruva Maharaj was able to become heavy. Although the completion of that analogy is that a person who has love of God who's sitting in his heart, he can purify the whole universe just by his presence in it, as with our Srila Gurudev or Srila Prabhupada and other pure devotees. So the demigod began to pray to the Lord that the whole universe now is suffering because of Dhruva's penances. Please give him your darshan. So the Lord appeared to Dhruva. He disappeared from his meditation and reappeared outside of him. And Dhruva Maharaj was able to see him. And all his senses were engaged in the Lord's service. He began drinking the Lord's form with his eyes. All of his senses began being engaged in the Lord's service. And he couldn't even speak. He was stuttering. He could not even ask his prayer. So the Lord touched him with his kancha, Lord Vishnu, and then uh, Dhruva Maharaj, uh, he knew Dhruva Maharaj's desire. So he told him that he would give him a kingdom that is not exactly Vaikuntha, but it's Rama Priya Vaikuntha. The Vaikuntha planet, is it Rama Priya Vaikuntha or next door, Dhruva Loka? Rama Priya Vaikuntha in this material world. He couldn't attain that Vaikuntha outside in Paravyoma, the transcendental realm, but
but there is a Vaikuntha region here, and he became the, uh, he was able to reside there and become like a king there. Then, uh, after ruling in this world, when that was complete, he went home and he became the king. His brother uh, was killed and Dhruva Maharaj became the king. And while he was the king, he had lots of very, very good association. Sometimes Narada Muni came to see him. Sometimes other great sages came to see him. And gradually, he became free from his desire to rule. Then, when he was, it was time for him to leave this world, to leave his body, the Lord was going to take him to Vaikuntha. But he started thinking of his mother. And so because he had some material attachment, he could not go to that Vaikuntha, but attain that Vaikuntha in this world. So Srila Gurudev asked us to relay what we hope we remember properly from having heard from Srila Gurudev. His bhakti, because it was motivated with a material desire, it did not fit into the category of Uttama bhakti, bhakti as was described by Sripad Aranya Maharaj from Bhakti Rasamar to Sindhu Bindu. The, um, one of the symptoms the um, tatasta lakshana, or marginal symptom of bhakti, is anya vilasita sunya, that in natural circumstances, ordinary, his, his natural state of being, he will not have any desire other than the desire to please Krishna. But Dhruva Maharaj has a continual desire for a great kingdom even greater than that of Brahma. So because he did not, uh, fall in the category of Anya Vilasita or Anya Vilas. Therefore, his plus also the Swarup Lakshana or intrinsic internal um, symptom of Bhakti is that one is always engaged for the happiness, welfare, and benefit of Krishna with all of the endeavors of his body, mind, words, and transcendental sentiments. As Srila Gurudev explained yesterday, while Dhruva Maharaj was engaged in that austerity, he didn't have any transcendental sentiments. So it, also he didn't engage in senses for the satisfaction of the Lord. He wanted his own satisfaction and for that he was worshipping. Therefore, his bhakti is not under the category of Shuddha bhakti or Uttama bhakti or pure bhakti. His bhakti is called uh, karma, sakarma bhakta, bhakti. That is, sa means with and karma, with kama, kama desire. Sorry, sa kama. Kama means he had personal desires. So therefore, his bhakti was not pure. Shri Gurudev also asked, what is the nature of the bhakti of Narada Muni? And as was mentioned, to you, compare. To compare. As was mentioned by Sri Padmada Maharaj, Narada Muni has so many manifestations. His original form is Madhu Mangal, the very, very intimate Priyanarm Saka of Sri Krishna. So in his original feature, he's Uttam 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 Mahabhagwat more intimate with Krishna than even the topmost of the five categories of pure bhakti. That is uh, Uddhav Maharaj. He's so much lacks times more than Uddhav, who is a... Oh, I forget the name. Prem Atur. Prem Atur means one who's overwhelmed with love of Krishna and overwhelmed by the love of Krishna's greatest devotees, the gopis. But still, Narada in his original feature as Madhu Mangal is lax, lax times greater than that even of Uddha, what to speak of Dhruva Maharaj. Then, in his, he has another form as mentioned by Sri Madhu Maharaj as Narada Gopi. Again, Uttam 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 Mahabhagwat. In his form as Narada, 
He also gets to go to Goloka Vrindavan sometimes and assist in the pastimes of the Lord. He met Mother Yasoda. He met the gopis. He discusses sometimes with Radharani. And even in his other features, as a Ram Bhakta and as a Narayan Bhakta, still he's fully in the category of Anyavi Lasita Sunyam with no other desire than to please the Lord. And therefore there's no comparison between the two. So Srila Gurudev ordered me to make a comparison between Dhruva Maharaj and the perfection that he attained by his performance of bhakti as discuss discussed in Extreme of Bhagavatam and Narad Rishi but uh, not uh, as Narad Gopi or any of these things this discussing today hmm? this particular Narad who appeared as the son of a maid servant and was initiated and took uh, instructions from the four Kumars. We compare these two. First of all, this Narad, about whom we have been discussing today, he went into the forest and he began to remember the mantra given by his Guru and he began to meditate on the instructions, he meditated on the mantra according to the instructions of his Guru. Therefore, by the influence of that mantra, he realized what is this mantra? This mantra and Supreme Lord are the same. No difference at all. So he had darshan of Bhagwan, Sri Narayan, but only for a moment. Then, in the next moment, that momentary vision disappeared and he began to weep in separation. As Pujapad Bhaktananda Bhakti Samaraj explained, at that time he heard a voice from the sky announce, In this life you will not see me again. I have appeared to you for a moment just to increase your eagerness to attain me. Those whose hearts are not completely pure, they can hardly see me in this world. And then he ordered him to chant, go on doing bhakti and travel everywhere. So in that life, Narad did not see the Supreme Lord again. Now a question comes, why is it that he had the darshan of the Supreme Lord only for a moment and then lost it for the rest of his life. There is a reason. His heart was not completely pure. It did not come into the category of Anya Bilashita Shunyam Gyana Kamadrina He was not free from all desire. He had a very small desire. It, I can say it was very small compared to the desires that I have. Mm -hmm. But from the point of view of pure bhakti, any small desire is a great obstacle. And what was that? Arach has explained, is called Sattvik Banabas. He had a desire. It was not an ignorant desire to take drugs and sleep. It was not a passionate desire to collect money or anything. But it was a desire in the mode of goodness. Sattvik Basana. That is that he thought it was very nice to do my bhajan, to practice my devotional service in a very Sattvic um, surrounding, a Sattvic environment in a beautiful forest which is clean and fresh and pure and very peaceful, undisturbed by other people. So because of this satric desire, satric banabas, a desire to reside in a place in the mode of goodness, in the forest, this was an obstacle. And therefore, he had darshan of the Lord for a moment and not again. But throughout his life, he felt separation, more and more separation from the Lord he had seen for a moment. And the fire of that separation burnt even the last final trace of material desire. And therefore, when he came to the very last moment of his life, just as lightning and illumination occur simultaneously, what happened? Payujamane maitam shudham bhagavatim tanum arabda karma niravano nyapata pancha bautikaha At once, at the same time, he gave up the body made of material elements and received Shuddham Bhagavatim Tanum, a body, Tanu, 
which was suitable to be an eternal associate of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And in that, that Satchitananda Vigraha, that form which is composed of eternity, knowledge and bliss, he was completely liberated and free to wander anywhere within the material or within the spiritual world. He could wander up to Vaikuntha and around the spiritual world and back to this world. He was completely liberated. So, at first, Narada had a little desire, and by the heat of separation, it was completely burnt away, and he attained his purely spiritual body and became the great liberated saint Narad. Now we compare this to Dhruva. When Dhruva had the darshan of the Lord within his heart, at that moment, he was very much struck with wonder. But his vision of the Lord in the heart also disappeared. And he felt that he had lost something very valuable, the most valuable thing. When he opened his eyes, he saw that the Lord was standing before him, right in front of him. He wanted to pray, but he was a five-year-old boy. He had no power to pray. The Lord touched him with his conch shell. And by that touch, he uh, bestowed upon him the adhikar to speak very wonderful prayers. Mm? At that time, he offered prayers to the Lord. And the Lord gave him a benediction that he would be the king of the, this world for 35,000 years. And he began to lament, what have I done, what have I done? At the time of my sadhan, at the time of my practices, I had a desire. And now uh, I will have to uh, receive the, the result of having that desire. I've made a big mistake. So he became the king of the world for 35,000 years. 36,000 36, years. And gradually he became more and more purified. At the end of his life, what happened? He saw one aeroplane come down from the, uh, with the associates of God from Vaikuntha, and they came there, and when he saw them, he gave his pranam to them. He worshipped them. He did their parakrama. Not only them, but even the aeroplane that they came down in, because the Lord and his paraphernalia are equally worshipable. So he was about to get on the aeroplane, and he stopped. He said, oh, where's my mother? He felt some indebtedness to her because in the beginning she told him, oh, if you want a kingdom greater than your father and your grand, gra grandfather and great-grandfather, then you have to approach Supreme Lord. He can fulfill any desires. So because Dhruva, at that very last moment, even he said, where's my mother? This shows that he still had some attachment, which was not a, of the nature of a transcendental attachment to Krishna. And therefore there was still some defect. When he went to step upon the aeroplane, in Bhagavatam it is stated, Vibrad Hiran Mayena, that suddenly his body became very effulgent as he was stepping onto the plane. And Srila Vishnu Takitakwa in his commentary explains that he achieved a spiritual body. But in this spiritual body he was taken by the associates of the Supreme Lord to Rama Vaikuntha, which was a destination not outside the coverings of this universe. Within, this un within the coverings of this universe, there is a planet. It is transcendental. But because Dhruva Maharaj, he, he had not come to this perfect standard. And he still had some attachment even to the last moment. He attained that Rama Priya Vaikuntha. And we cannot say whether he is still there today or not. If he has got outside of this universe or not. Whereas Narad, by the separation that he felt from the Lord, he never thought about his mother. As soon as his mother was bitten by the snake and she died, uh, then he'd forgotten everything. Way back there. So how can we make a comparison between Dhruva and Narad? Narad is far superior. And therefore he attained a spiritual body which was suitable for traveling beyond this world. So when we compare Dhruva and Narad, we can see that uh, Narad is far superior. <laughs> Dhruva Maharaj, Bhakti Anna Vilasita Yukta. Not Shunya. Not Shunya. Also, Gyan Karma Adi Abritam, not Anabritam. And what he has said to Krishna, Kantarishna, Anukulena Krishna Anshulan, what service? In what, whom, whose guidance? What he has so he is not coming in the Kaito very of pure Bhakta. But he was Bhakta. But he was Bhakta. Shakam Bhakta. So we should try to be oh, 
follow Uttama. Can I ask a question? I mean, Narad Zuba Samne to bolvo, call for two minutes. Two minutes to be able to talk. Oh, drama play should be ready. Where you will play, you should select the place and make. Hare Krishna. So as Gurudev order to compare Not order. between... I have taken order. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have taken order from Gurudev to compare between Dhruva and Narad Rishi. So, Srila Jeevika Sai Padar explained in Bhakti Sandarbha there are three types of Uttam Bhagavad. Murchit Kasai, Nirdhut Kasai, Prapta Parsad Bhagavad Deha. The first of Narad Rishi, when he had desired to be in forest to do bhajan, at that time he is this stage called of Uttam Bhagavat Murchit Kasai. There are some four, but in Latin position. Nirdhut Kasai, whose all kind of faults was out, like Sukhdev Goswami. And third stage of Narad Rishi, when he get transcendental body, then called second. second. Second stage, the Prapta Parsal Bhagavad Deha. Among these three, Narad Rishi is Prapta Parsal Bhagavad Deha is third stage of Uttam Bhagavad. This one thing, another thing, Narad Rishi is Guru of Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva is disciple. How we can compare between Guru and Sisya? If someone can ask, then you can compare yourself and Guru Dev, is it possible? What to say about the compare between a guru and disciple, even Naraji is another more disciple, Balmiki ji, who wrote, who composed Simar, Sim Balmiki Ramayan. Even before Lord Ram incarnated in this world, before complete his past time, he wrote everything. Another disciple, Vyasdev, who composed Simad Bhagavatam. So even Dhruva is not compared with, with Balmiki Rishi and Vyasji. What to say about Guru? So it is not at all comparable with Dhruva and Narodasi between Guru and disciple Hare Krishna because I get only two narrative? minutes. Are they the same Narad? This Narad in Bhagavatam and that Narad who is a Guru of our nature and everything, are they the same Narad? But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is disciple. And Varamananda, he is Guru. Mm -hmm. Can you say that Mahaprabhu is uh, not superior than right. Mahaprabhu is Sang Bhagavan, but Ramananda is not Sang Bhagavan. So you should think all these things and then reconcile. <laughs> Don't tell like so. Sometimes the system may be. Exception must not be exemplified. Exception yeah. 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 Have you ready? Ready, oh, Krishna, Das, and Krishna. They are being ready. Where they will do? But they have not met any place. Outside? Go. Hi Krishna, it's the 6th of February 2004, we're here in Mwilam, Australia, you're listening to the Pure Bhakti video cast. God.